Hey, it's MK, and I am back with another Follow a Sketch February, and this sketch here is actually for day seven. I know I am going completely out of order, and I apologize about that, um, but I kind of sort of uh, have gaps in my assignments for YouTube, and so I'm kind of sort of picking and choosing which layouts I want to make. Sorry, Sandy. Anyways, um, I am using some of the Urban Collection that is by Close to My Heart. Now, this is a re-release back in 2019, where the original one, I believe, was in, I want to say, 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. And I just love this paper, you guys. Again, it's by Close to My Heart. And they finally did a grunge, like, total distressed paper. It's it's really cool. It's not quite Tim Holtz, but it's really cool paper and right up my alley. And I'm glad they brought it back. Um, with a little bit more fresher colors in 2019. Anyways, I will be working on a um, pocket page, both sides of it, and I pulled out a bunch more of these little embellishments that were part of the steampunk embellishment swap that is put on by RTS, um, Ginger Bush. She is here on YouTube. Definitely um, sent me a ton of these, you guys, and I absolutely love them. They're perfect little grabby get... Um, you know, grabby little embellishments that I can put them on. And some of them have their names on them and some of them do not. So I apologize if I've already opened it and it didn't have a name on it anymore um, because I was going to use it and then I'm not that organized. I'm, I, I'm sorry. And this one here in the little baggie, I thought that it had a name on it, but I couldn't find it at the time. And then when I went to go glue it on, I realized that it is written in, in um, white ink on one of the black gears and it is by Annie O. So I apologize that you guys won't get to see her name, but the other ones, um, I have a name and I know that the tag with the um, handwritten sentiment on it, it also had a name, but again, I opened it already for a pre for another project that I thought I was going to use it on. It just ended up being too big and it was perfect for this project. So anyways, I do plan on using a bunch of those on these um, two layouts. Now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is uh, put, you know, I off camera, you guys, it's so boring. This is the longest part about a pocket page is to cut up all your papers and your photos and prepare for the pocket page. It is so long, so boring, and it's the majority of my recording. So anyways, off camera, I cut out all of my pattern paper, as well as my, fo as well as my photos, and my photo mats, which I brought in two plain card stocks, one blue and one um, yellow, because the other side of this layout is very yellow, and so I brought that yellow in for the other side of the layout. And, um, this blue side of the layout, I, I should say, um, is actually going to be where the sketch is visible. And then the other side is kind of just a, no, nah, whatever I have left over, it's what it's getting. <laughs> Maybe. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to kind of sort of line up all of my pieces. So that way I, I kind of sort of have a... Um, like what looks like a full background, but I didn't want it to be a full background. I only had one of these blue pieces of paper. And so I had to kind of finagle it a bit to get it to work for me. And I glued the wrong spot. So I have to take it up. Now, the best thing about the ATG is if you don't put pressure on it, it's really not stuck. Um, it's kind of a, kind of a, a, play with it. It's a permanent adhesive, but if you don't put like uber super amount of pressure on it, it's just kind of sitting there and you can roll it up into a ball and take it off without minimal damage or without a lot of damage to your paper. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, uh, just doing this faux little uh, pretend like it's a full page kind of thing. Uh, the photo up at the top, um, or actually I should say right in the middle, that actually took up an entire sheet and I didn't want to cut it down anymore. And so basically I just used the pattern paper as the photo mat. And I, I don't really think it's that visible that it doesn't have blue around it. I think it's okay. I really do. Um, so anyways, before I flip it over, now I do make a huge mistake on this layout, you guys. Um, it's not very visible because I did cut it all out. It was, it was so big that I had to cut it all out. Um, but what I do is I glued both sides and I never do that. It's it's almost like I've never made a pocket page before, you guys. 
I've never done this before. See how I'm gluing both sides? I can't do that. That's too much paper for anything to go through. Um, I just don't know what I was thinking at that time. I should not have done this. Um, but then I make another mistake and I glue all my photos to this side as well. What was I thinking? And then I made another mistake. I cut it. I tried to cut it apart with scissors. Well, the only scissors that work with this is long blade scissors because, yes, I can do it with my Tim Holtz scissors. However, they're not long enough. Um, I don't have the, the nine inch scissors that um, he has. But the thing is, is that um, I didn't I didn't think about it. But when I cut up my pocket pages, I almost always use an X-Acto knife. So what on earth was I thinking grabbing the scissors? I, I don't know. Um, like I said, it was almost like this was my very first pocket page I've ever made because I, I just really got lost at what it was I was doing. And then to turn around and like realize my mistake, like what on earth? I knew better than that. So yeah, um, when I usually do a pocket page, I usually do one side cut it apart as soon as I'm done with it, then flip it over and glue everything else. Because then I'm only really going through one layer or one layout at a time rather than trying to do both like I did here. Um, it's a huge mistake. And later on at the end, I believe when I do the close-ups, I kind of show you the jagged edge of one of my photos, which is kind of sort of not very visible in... Um, and once it's in the pocket page, it, it really is not. But it's still to me, it's like, oh, you silly goose. Why on earth were you doing that? What, I, I mean, what were you thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I, I just honestly have no clue what happened. So here's where I make the next mistake. I've got everything glued to the other side. I haven't cut it apart. And now I'm getting ready to glue my photos onto the other side. I don't have anything cut apart, which means that I've got photo, cardstock, pattern paper, turn it over, more pattern paper, and possibly up at the top, another photo. Oh my gosh, that is a lot to cut through. And I just definitely had no clue. I, I just was like, well, do, 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 do. let's put all both sides together. It's going to be cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. All right. So what are these photos of? Uh -huh. There are the photos. So we went to Hawthorne, Nevada. Now, I, there's nothing to write home about at Hawthorne, Nevada. Seriously. Uh, my grandfather uh, actually lived out most of his life in Hawthorne, Nevada. And there's an ordinance museum there, which is um, kind of a nod to the fact that there's an ammunition depot, um, an, an army base, basically, that is also located in um Hawthorne, Nevada, which actually it's not truly in Hawthorne. It's actually in Walker, but um, it's technically, it's so close to Hawthorne that it's technically in Hawthorne, right? It's it's like, is it Wendover, Utah or Wendover, Nevada, right? That's kind of the, the deal of it is. So anyways, uh, long story short, <clears throat> they have a museum dedicated to all of the years that this ammunition depot has been in Hawthorne, which I think is really cool because they have like one of everything pertaining to any projectile that the military has ever owned, right? Or has been in contact with because there is some foreign um, uh, ammunition in this depot as well. So it's really cool, actually, when you get to the museum portion of it. Well, the whole thing's a museum. Um, but when you get to uh, like the pieces, the bits and pieces that uh, actually start to look like a museum. So you get through all of the, the missiles and you get through all of the guns and you get through, you know, all of the really cool boy stuff. Um, once you get past that, there's actually like a museum and inside there's a display and it kind of walks you through the history of um, of the military. It's actually really, really super cool because when you get to certain parts of wars, there's actually like um, donations where people have gifted um, things that they've, per that they not purchased, but they've brought back from Korea, things that they've brought back from um, Germany, things that they have brought back from Russia. It's, it's actually really, really cool to see some of this stuff because it's not just the U.S. military that you're looking at. It's, it's actually the other um, opponent's military um, uniforms and, and things like that as well. So 
Anyways, with that being said, there are these little rooms that also represent other jobs that were in the military that aren't part of the war portion, you know, the, the office jobs, um, how to make a dog tag, um, uh, or or the older tools to make a dog tag. They don't make them like this anymore. Um, there is where people had to fill out reports and things like that. And so all of this stuff is, is uh, you know, it's very old for one, um, but it's all in, in, um, in separate rooms. So like you can walk through, it's almost kind of like, you know, walking through the history of the military and whatnot. And then you get to the office portion and you get to see all this really cool stuff. So this one here is actually the stamp press. And, um, I just, I really liked all the drawers and things like that. I mean, I, my, 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 um, <laughs> scrapbooking brain just kicks in going, oh my God, I wish that was in my room. Right. And I can, oh my gosh, so many things. Um, but I just love the way that it looks and it's very appealing to me. It's very, um, organized to me, even though it just looks like a hot mess. It really is. Um, but it's really neat because it's got all these different plates for you to put all of your different letters on and all the, um, all the alphabets kind of cooked together. Um, and then somebody went to one of the drawers and actually put down when the ordnance museum was put in place, which is, I believe it says 2002. And then it says Hawthorne Ordnance Museum, which I thought was really cool. So I took a close up picture of that as well. Um, but that is what this is, is kind of like the stamp press room. And it also has the machine where you, you stick the plate in to create a dog tag. And when I was a little girl, my dad used to work at an armory and, um, I used to go into, uh, I can't really remember what it was called, but it's where they kept the guns. Um, and, and I remember this because my dad did the memorial, the 21 gun salute memorial, um, every time, as long as he was. Um, stationed at that armory. And so I remember when they were going in and they were cleaning their rifles right before the salute. And I would go in and I would make a dog tag every time. I absolutely loved that machine. That was one of my favorite things to go do is to just play with the dog tag making machine. <laughs> I know it's very, very weird, um, it, to be honest, and uh, I had no business doing it, but it's a very small town. <laughs> That's my only excuse, um, is that it's a very small town. And so, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't think I was in trouble, uh, because they let me do it every time. Um, but yes, it, it was just so neat watching, uh, the whole crew get all of their fancy little, um, you know, white sashes on and, and their dress blues, or actually it was dress greens, um, cause it was the armory, uh, or the army, sorry. <clears throat> and of course, you know, their polished rifles, their polished boots. I mean, they were just so fancy. And then when I walked into this ordnance museum and saw all of this stuff, it was like, the memory just bam came back in a rush like oh my gosh i remember doing this and and it was just one of my childhood memories that i absolutely remember doing i i loved the smell of my dad's armory and um and and watching it change over the years we we also did toys for tots and they turned their entire um gymnasium at the armory into a into a, just a huge toy lot. And we got to, you know, organize, organize it by age. And then of course, you know, these are the girls, these are the boys, and then going down the list. And I got to pick out toys for the other kids. And it was just, it was so much fun. Um, I just absolutely loved it. And then of course, when um, they didn't do toys for tots anymore, it turned into a gym and it was fun, you know, going out and working out with the, uh, the female officers. And I just had a blast, you guys. So anyways, um, it took me a bit to realize that I needed to use my X-Acto knife to cut all these apart. I also was showing you guys while I was babbling about, you know, the old, the olden days. Um, I, I also showed you guys that I go back around all the edges and I add liquid adhesive because there are teeny tiny little bits and pieces that I do chop off, um, that I don't want to lose because it would look funny if it did. And then there's other pieces that I'm okay with losing because it, then it just looks like it might be tucked underneath, um, underneath the layout and such. So I'm also taking these random numbers. They have absolutely nothing, nothing to do. They are just totally random numbers that I absolutely love. They look like old typewriter keys. Um, and I just wanted to use them up. I had three nines and a zero. 
Seriously, I almost turned them into sixes. And then I thought, oh, having six, six, six on my layout might not be good. So I kept them as nines. Um, but I just thought they were kind of cool because they remind me of the um, of the typewriter keys. It would have been cool if they were um, like outlined in silver, but they're not. They're just uh, black little uh, enamel numbers. So it was really, really cool. And I've, I've been dying to use them up. I've had them forever. Again, it's a close to my heart product. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to use them all up. So there is the layout. I know. Babble, babble. Oh my god. So here is the layout that I turned into a pocket page. And then I basically just took my X-Acto knife, uh, well, <laughs> in some spots when I remembered, and chopped it all up so it would fit into my pocket. Now this particular pocket page does not have a brand name on it. I do not know who created this pocket page, but it's got two six by sixes and three four by sixes. I'm thinking, I'm guessing that it is a Stampin' Up when they used to have the pocket pages and I was able to um, get the variety packs I'm thinking that's where it came from, but I don't remember you guys. Seriously, when when the pocket page thing was all the rage, a uh, rave, I definitely wanted to stay away from design A. Oh, sorry. I say it like that because it's like everywhere. I, I wasn't into design A because I always had the the horizontal and the vertical photos like you see right here. Um, and so I never, ever, ever wanted to do design A where it was all horizontals. I mean, I, I, that's for people that still, you know, get their photo developed, right? So anyways, um, I always was on the lookout for unique configurations of the pocket pages. And this happened to be one of them. And I really enjoyed Stampin' Up's variety mix because I got two to three to four, um, different kinds instead of 20 of one kind. The, anyways, so the very first one that I was showing you where Gabriel's typing on the typewriter, this one here, he's trying to break into the safe. He, he wasn't, I love that his heart's full of uh, bright hopes. He never made it into the safe, by the way. Um, but what I was showing you at the bottom of his photo, um, and you'll see it in these close-ups as well if it goes up that high. No, it doesn't. I <laughs> conveniently did not take a picture of that. It's all jagged um, because I tried to use scissors that just couldn't handle going through that thickness of um, all those layers. And like I said, I have no idea what I was thinking. But anyways, I had a blast um, making this layout. I love taking all my leftovers and creating the other side of the layout. I just really enjoy um, taking a sketch and seeing if I can, uh, you know, chop it up and put it into a into a pocket page. Also too, I flipped the photos. So I put the photos down at the bottom and I put my title up at the top. So that way um, it, it kind of worked better for my blank spaces that I had. All right, that is it for me today. Thank you so very much. Um, thanks for putting up with me for not doing the sketches in order. I apologize about that. I am trying to fill the gaps. But this was... Um, for uh, day seven, if you guys are following along and you head over to the Facebook group and check out day seven and see who else was playing along and actually did theirs on day seven. <laughs> Thank you so much and I will check y'all later. Bye.